Hello, welcome to Tabletop CP. Today we begin a brand new Spectre Operations campaign called the Doomsday Device. So to start with, uh, you may notice I got some new terrain. So I got these Spanish tile buildings from Charlie Foxtrot. Uh, super awesome MDF buildings with solid resin. Pantile style buildings. I mean, Pantile style roofs. Uh, they're really cool. Uh, if you're ever needing this style of building, I would give Charlie Foxtrot a look for sure as they're uh, top-notch products. Before we begin the uh, briefing for tonight's game, I just want to talk a little bit about the campaign itself and how this one's going to be uh, different from the camp, uh, Conflict Dubala campaign. This is going to be a new type of campaign. I will be uh, designing and running the games as Game Master and Robert and Andre will be playing the forces involved. I think this is going to make things more tense and interesting as neither play will, player will know much about anything except what their objectives are. And this will also allow me to add hidden items or events that neither player knows about or I could even add a third party to the game, controlled by me, or I can control uh, NPCs like civilians. Lots of possibilities. Each mission will have victory conditions with points, positive and negative points. These points will be tracked, and players will be able to spend these points on various things to use in the next mission. Some examples would be spending points to change the time a mission occurs, so as to catch the enemy unaware. Spend points to know where and when enemy reinforcements are arriving. Spend points on infiltrators or civilians to disrupt the enemy, or even spend points on a uh, off-table asset. This is just a few examples. Uh, this will mostly be specific to the next mission, but I may add some things that you can build towards by saving points over multiple games, or just generic uh, bonuses you can buy in every game. I'm also going to make death permanent in this one. So uh, you patrons, I hate to say it, but if you go down in this mission, or in one of these missions in this campaign, you will not be uh, coming back. Uh, so we're going to burn through those guys pretty quick. Uh, but as a game master, all things are possible, and, some, and uh, someone we thought was long dead may reappear as part of another mission. Who knows? Anyway, that's the idea behind it. I got the idea from my friend Casey, who uses a similar system as Outstanding Game Battle Force. I see no reason why you could not use the same type of campaign in that game as well. So that's what we're going to do. It's going to be... We're going to see how it works. We'll, uh, I'll go over the points when I go over the briefing for the mission for this one. But uh, we're going to try to keep better track and try to make sure that the games actually have a little bit more, more meaning in the next game as well. The last one we did, Conflict Dubala, was fun, but the missions were very loosely uh, linked together, if at all. It just kind of, uh, one mission just went into the next with not really a whole lot of regard to what happened the time before. But this time I want to do things a little bit differently and add a little bit more variety. And having me as a impartial game master able to manipulate the battle and keep secrets from these guys I think is going to make things a lot cooler. So with that being said, we will now do the briefing for the first mission in this campaign. This mission is called Casas Grande. Background. After a harrowing close call extracting the experimental chemical weapon from the roof of the ba Baghdad Hotel in Mursaka, Arbok decides it's no longer safe to keep the device in Dubala. So they sent it to the Badlands of Mexico, where they built a secret lab and plan to continue researching and developing the weapon. Situation, Andrew Cox. Listen up. Indel has traced the device to a location 20 miles southeast of Casas Grande, Mexico, and is being held in an old church. These Arbok scum are planning to move the device to an undetermined location. We don't know exactly when they plan to move it, but it's safe to say it will be before dawn, so time is critical. Also, we have two hitchhikers with us for this one, Captain Greg Padilla and Sergeant Dan Klain. They are here to assist and verify the device is either retrieved or destroyed. We need to move fast on this one. Get in there, search for the device, and get the hell out. If that becomes impossible, Wild Bill and Padilla have charges to destroy the device in place. Meet at the Ops Center for plans. We hit the target at 0230. Now we'll take a look at the forces involved. So the main bad guy is going to be Arbok. Everyone's... Uh, favorite PMC to hate. So Arbok, uh, they're going to have the uh, start off, they're going to have six chemical troops. 
They're going to be professionals, led by a professional sergeant with one frag, one smoke, and long range comms. All have red dot uh, comms and body armor, close combat weapon, and night vision. And we have one, two, three assault rifles, one machine gun, and two SMGs. Uh, the red base here is going to be the commander of the chemical troops. And that is going to be Sander Tyson. So he is the Arbok Chemical Troop Commander. Next up we have the Arbok Grunts as I call them. These are trained Arbok troops. Uh, there's going to be uh, the led by a trained sergeant. He's going to have one frag. And he's going to have night vision. No one else is. They all have body armor and a red dot. So we got one sniper. We got one, two, three, four, five, six assault rifles. The squad leader has an underbarrel grenade launcher. We have one machine gun and then the sniper. So that is the Arbok Grunts. So both of these guys are going to be starting on the board, and I'll get to that when we uh, talk about deployment. And finally, we got the Arbok Red Hats, which I'm calling them for now until they earn a name. But they're Arbok Professional Soldiers, and they are going to um, be in an armor and technical with a 50 caliber machine gun led by a professional sergeant with one frag and one smoke grenade. Each has a red dot, body armor, trauma kit, comms, close combat weapon, and night vision. And that is the Arbok forces. Next up is the good guys. So this is going to be um, commanded by Shadow Spear. This is a Shadow Spear operation with Task Force Padilla support. So these guys are all operators. They have all the trappings of the operators that we always have. So they're going to have uh, clo uh, body armor, close combat, specialized close combat weapon, pistol, trauma kits, one each frag, smoke, stun, uh, red dot, scope, and what else are they going to have? Uh, Padilla himself is here and Wild Bill are going to have uh, demo charges. And other than that, I think that they just have the same old stuff that they always have, uh, that the uh, operators always have. Yeah, so uh, let's talk about who we got here. So in charge of the commanding the group today is going to be Andrew Cox. He is armed with the carbine. He's the task force commander for this mission. Next to him is Wild Bill Thompson with the blue base. He's got a carbine. Next to him is Kevin Green with the green base. He's got the carbine with underbarrel grenade launcher. Next we have Dan Beersford with his LMG, Josh Bruder with the carbine, and then we have the two Task Force Padilla uh, advisors, we'll call them, and it's Padilla and Sergeant Dan Klain with his heavy sniper rifle. And these are the boys who are going to have to go in and steal the device. So now we'll talk about deployment and mission. Oh, so I did forget to mention that the uh, good guys are also going to have access to one Predator fired Predator drone fired Hellfire missile. And that can only be called in by uh, Klain or Padilla, who both have long range comms. So the mission is for Task Force Cox, we'll call it, as uh, he's in command of this one, is to find the device, which will be hidden in one of these buildings, and that will be indicated by the Arbok player when he gets here, uh, where which building it's in. So they're going to have to find it, and they're going to have to extract it off of this board edge. Uh, Deployment-wise, Arbok, the chemical troops will be deploying in the buildings. Uh, they don't necessarily all have to be where the uh, device is, but they just all have to be in a building. And they're not going to be unaware, but they are busy prepping for moving as this device is going to be moved at dawn. The Arbok grunts, meanwhile, are going to deploy as sentries or patrols. At least four of them are going to have to be doing a patrol around the perimeter. And the rest of them can be deployed anywhere uh, in the village, either up on here, in the buildings, anywhere that uh, the Arbok player wants. Uh, the Arbok uh, QRF, the Red Hats, are going to be coming in off of this board edge. And they will come in four turns after they are called with a successful command roll uh, from anyone with long range comms. So either the Arbok Grunt Leader uh, or the Chemical Troop Leader can call in the reinforcements. And if somehow they all die before they can call or they can't complete the call, then I'll just uh, decide when the reinforcements come in. So that's kind of the benefit of having a third person as a game master. Uh, I can call those guys in as needed if they can't come in. I can change the uh, way they come in. Uh, also, 
both players aren't going to know which side they're going to be coming in on. So Robert, who's coming over, is going to be Arbok. He doesn't know that Andre is going to have to get his men off of this side. Andre will not know that Robert's reinforcements will be coming in on this side. So it'll make things interesting. They'll just be less known, which will make everything a little bit uh, more tense, I believe. And the uh, yeah, the mission of Task Force Cox obviously is to get the device off the board. So let's talk about points. So uh, well, let's read the objectives. So Task Force Cox must secure the device and carry it off of the western board edge. Failing that, they must at least destroy the device with the charge placed directly on it. They may use a Hellfire missile to destroy the building housing the device, but this will only ensure the destruction of the device on a 4+. plus. So if Task Force Cox can capture the device, they're going to get 10 points. If they destroy the device with the charge, they're going to get 7 points. If they destroy the device with a Hellfire, it'll be 5 points. If they eliminate all the chemical weapon troops, they'll get 3 points. Uh, while they're searching, if they can manage to search extra buildings, they're going to get D3 points for each extra building search. Uh, to search, they must spend a full turn in the building searching, which means they don't do anything else for the rest of that turn. Uh, they will also lose two points for every Shadow Spear Operator lost, and if they lose Klain or Padilla, they'll lose three points. Uh, Arbok, they must protect the device. If they, if they uh, secure the device and protect it, they're going to get seven points. Uh, if the device just survives the game, and they're going to get five points. They're going to get two points for every Shadow Spear operator they killed. If they kill any of the Task Force Padilla operators, they'll get three points. If uh, Task Force Cox secures the uh, captures the device, they're going to be at minus five points. And if the device is destroyed, they will have minus three points. So again, these points are going to be used uh, to buy upgrades or intelligence or abilities uh, for the next mission. Those haven't been determined yet, uh, but they will. Uh, before the next game, both players will be allowed to spend any points that they have earned in this game on upgrading their forces for the next battle. And that's pretty much it. Uh, terrain-wise, again, uh, Spectre isn't big on terrain. There's two types of terrain, heavily obscured, lightly obscured. The type of terrain doesn't really matter, so it's pretty much what you see is what you get. Uh, the walls are obviously very high. It's going to take a leg up to get over, unless you can boost over on something. There's quite a few things kind of stacked around that will help you get over the wall. And other than that, we've got some woods. These are going to block line of sight. Uh, this orchard will not block line of sight, but it will be a uh, obscuring terrain. And I think that's about it. So, uh, yeah, up here there's a nice uh, place to put snipers or uh, whatnot up there. And I think, oh, I did forget one important thing. can't find it at the moment. There's gonna, there is going to be a spotlight. So remember, only the uh, chemical troops and the leader of the Arbok Grunts has night vision. And this is night, 0, 2.30 in the morning. So the Arbok squad leader will have um, night vision, so he can spot anything. Uh, the rest of the guys are going to have to be alerted by him. Or they are alert, so they will have a chance to spot anything, I believe, that gets within 24 of them. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But... Any, there's going to be a spotlight mounted up here as well. So that is going to be able to be shown onto any part of the board. And it has to be controlled by a man, of course. So he can light up an area with the spotlight. Or if he is alerted to the location of an enemy, he can light them up with the spotlight. I don't know how long he'll last. Um, he'll probably get a shot right away, but who knows? The spotlight might do something. So we do have a spotlight that will be out and it'll be controllable by the Arbok player. And I believe that does it for the intro. It's a little bit longer than I like to do, but this is a brand new campaign, so I had to explain a little bit about that. And now uh, Andre and uh, Robert, uh, when they get here, I'll brief them uh, privately, each each one privately, so they don't know what the other one's uh, exact objectives are or how they're gonna be deploying or anything like that. And uh, that's it. So once they get here, we'll do that, and then we'll get the game started. All right, so Robert and Andre have arrived. I've briefed them. On, uh, Robert's going to be Arbok for this campaign. And he has placed all of his guys. So uh, he's moved. He's put two guys here on patrol. He's put two guys over there on patrol. And the rest of his guys are all up here. So his sniper, his squad leader with the night vision, radio man. So this guy's going to be controlling the spotlight. Spotlight's actually going to be three inches bigger than this. It should be a little bit bigger than that, I think. And... Uh, We'll just go over that, the light pool for that. So if 
anyone caught in the light pool can be shot at like daytime and anyone in the light pool can't see out so it blinds you and it lights you up uh, other than that uh, he put uh, he put the device in here with what two guys three guys three guys and oh I forgot the uh, machine gun that I mentioned is actually a flamethrower Oh, because, it is a flamethrower. Yeah, I forgot that these guys carry the flamethrower in case the uh, chemical agent gets out of hand. They could just incinerate everything. So he's got three guys in here and two guys in here. Three guys in there. Three guys two in there. Two on the bottom and one up on the second story. Okay. So he's got all of his chemical guys in here prepping the weapon for travel. So a couple of things. It's nighttime. So normally you can only move your agility at night but we're going to say that since these guys have probably walked around this perimeter a hundred times already that they're just going to move normal speed uh they're also unaware i said they were aware but they're not uh unaware doesn't mean they're out of it it just means they know there's danger in the area but not imminent so they're aware there's something going on but they're kind of just doing their thing so because of that they're going to have to spot anyone so uh, without night vision if anyone within six inches in their field of view is going to be spotted on a six, uh, uh, or automatically spotted within six inches. Uh, anyone within six to 12, it's going to be a three plus to spot them. 12 to 24 is a six plus to spot them. Uh, that can be modified if the operators start moving tactically at night. It's another minus two. And then we're going to say if they're moving tactically in any of these woods, it'll be another minus one. So Andre should be able to sneak up here pretty good. On shooting also at night shooting, uh, 0 to 12 inches is minus 1, 12 to 24 is minus 2, 24 plus minus 3, and that obviously only applies if you don't have night vision. So that's uh, Robert's thing, I guess. So what is your plan to just hang out, I guess? Well, it's basically... Defend uh, your buildings? Defend the buildings, um, patrol the perimeter. And obviously I've got the quick reaction force there in the event that the courtyard is breached. Okay. Um, so yeah, I these guys the are... flamethrower will be a nasty surprise. That will be pretty interesting. All right, so that's it. Uh, okay. That is the uh, setup. So Andre's made his plan. Actually, we should probably go over what Andre's plan is real quick. Uh -huh. So Andre's going to give his plan even though it's not fully fleshed out yet what, what are you, are you saying it's like a half-baked thing <laughs> sort of so uh um a couple other things i should mention is that uh these guys including the um spotlight are going to move a, in a random facing every time until they're until they're alerted then they can start acting otherwise up. it'll be kind of hard for me to sneak around since i move first yeah <laughs> <You'd be laughs> hey look i happen to look your way um so I'm going to break off a uh, fire team with uh, Bruder and Wild Bill, and okay. they're going to be coming in over off of this uh, table edge Travis is pointing to there. Yep. They're going to make their way up to the corner of the uh, compound there, and I can get up into right about where Travis was pointing without being heard at the sprint, but I'll have to be careful uh, with the facing of the... Uh, uh, commander with the night vision because he can still spot me from there so I'll have to think about that or maybe yeah, maybe I'm better off uh, trying to come up on the edge well yeah <laughs> night vision's night vision uh, it's just uh, <laughs> All right, so tough to deal with. So know. actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably once these guys come past, just stealthing it up this way, yeah. and Cause that, that would, yeah, because his light and sight would be blocked. Yeah, despite that. that's that's going to be my best bet. Okay, okay. so that was um, Bruder and Wilder. Bruder and Wilder. Wild, um, Bill. Wild Bill Thompson. I got uh, Padilla and uh, Clean. Is it? Yep. Sergeant Dan. Sergeant Dan. Yep. All right. So these guys are. Task force operators, Andre has said they probably shouldn't be getting in there and mixing it up. They're more of advisors, but they can, but he's going to try to keep them out of it. So, yeah, I'm looking at them as uh, they're just going to be doing overall fire support, and they're basically just, uh, you know, Except for, they want to be there to observe. Uh, they don't mind squeezing off a couple shots from range, but... But Padilla does need to get up and verify the device. But he'd rather do that... Uh, after it's clear <laughs> when it's safe <laughs> yeah so um 
I haven't decided for sure, but um, he's going to need to take the sniper shot on the uh, night vision goggles because those have got to go away early <laughs> on. Okay, Sergeant Dan. Um, targets. Yep. And then I've got a uh, so uh, green has got the uh, grenade launcher. Yep. And uh, uh, Beersford has the uh, LMG. So they're going to be focusing on clearing off this uh, upper level here. Okay. And um, that leaves uh, Cox to handle these last two dudes. Okay. And they're coming in kind of from over in this that direction. So um, I'm honestly thinking, um, you know, popping up in these woods. Yeah, if you move tactically into the woods, you're going to be pretty much undetectable. Yeah. I mean, not not quite, but almost. It's, I think it needs a six. Yeah. So if he um, gets within twelve of you. Yeah. And right. uh, so it's going to be a couple, you know, turns of these guys kind of rotating around because uh, I want them to, you know probably be about 15 to 20 inches on their circuit before I uh, really make my uh, move. Okay. So um, that's kind of it. The uh, thought process there is that uh, Bruder and uh, uh, who's he with? Thompson. Uh, Bruder and Thompson, they're going to try and hold down these two buildings. So. It's not so much that they're going to take the buildings, it's just if we've got dudes uh, popping out of there, mm -hmm. I want them to uh, handle it. Okay, so and they're covering the back end. So yeah, they're just uh, back end fire support, and then I'm just going to pour everything else onto the uh, front of this building, which seems to be where the main force is at the moment. And once I've got that, then I can uh, move the main force through the uh, main building and clean it up. and probably push some guys back out into the uh, kill box back there. Push them out, sweet. It's a hell of a plan, we'll see how it works. It's gonna go exactly like that, oh, step by step, Travis. They always do it. What could go wrong? No, nothing. <laughs> All right, so I think finally we're ready to begin the game. Andre uh, gets the uh, initiative in the first turn, so we'll begin with the command phase. Andre's elected not to come in yet, so that means we went right into Robert's movement phase. Patrols just moved along. These guys all randomly faced a certain direction, so they're looking like that. Guy in the end here, the radio has the spotlight, and the spotlight just points whatever direction he is pointing. So now we move on to turn two. Now we need to roll for initiative. Okay. So it's a five on a four. Ooh. Ouch. I'll tie it. Tie it. Okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> All right, so Arbok has the initiative. Okay. Robert had the initiative. No command phase, so he did his move. Uh, so the patrols just kept going. Spotlight's now over there. Pretty much everyone's the same way except the sniper is now facing this way and it is Andre's movement phase now and he is going to start bringing stuff in. Andre only brought Bruder and Thompson in. Everyone else is going to stay off the board. They did, did move in tactically here behind those two Arbok grunts. So it is uh, initiative. combat phase actually. Combat phase, so yeah. Andre could take them out but I think we'd know this. He'd probably be heard. They, he does have silencers but they're not that quiet. They're not that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, so that's it then. Next uh, phase, initiative. Tie. Oh, <laughs> that's three sixes now you've rolled for initiative in a row. All right, Andre's so, woo Task Force Cox has the initiative. So Bruder and Thompson have moved up tactically towards this building. Meanwhile, the rest of the guys are still just going about their business. Night Vision guy is now looking this way, but he cannot see them because just the angle. Looking down the length of that roof is uh... so. It's combat phase, Andre. Okay. No combat. <laughs> okay. Next uh, initiative phase, Andre again. Andre again. Oh man. Andre moved these two guys over here tactically, ready to take down the uh, squad leader dude. But luckily he turned and faced the other way. Never noticed him, so they didn't have to do that. And then everyone else is just moving. Spotlights now over here. And yeah, these guys are all facing everywhere but this way. <laughs> Next initiative. You know, Andre's got it again. Yep. Did you want it this time? Uh, I actually hadn't thought about it that far. <laughs> um, but okay. yeah, probably. Um, all right, so we move into the command phase. So Andre uh, looks like he's going for it now. He got within four, so the guys in here, if there is anyone in there, are going to be detected. 
or they're going to detect him, I should say, because if you get within four, you can hear him. Uh, so, Can't yeah, I so hear them? Bill Thompson's over there. Yeah, they're, they're in there. They're working. Oh, yeah, they're mm -hmm. packing shit up. So I know there's dudes in there. Yeah, so Thompson, mm -hmm. he's looking that way. Brooder's covering this way. These guys come around. They actually got in the light pool, so they can't see. Um, squad leader with the night vision is looking this way, and suddenly he sees movement in the trees. I don't know if he can see them. We're saying you can't see through the trees. Yeah, I don't think you can see the guys behind the trees. But you can definitely see yep. three guys hiding out in those woods there. Mm -hmm. And the sniper is also pointing that way. Machine gunner is pointing this way. Spotlight over there. And that's it. That is uh, both movement phases. Now it is combat, and I think we're going to see some combat right I'll now. I'll pass. Okay, Andre's going to pass. You got any shit? No, let me think about it. So the alarm is going up right now. The squad leader is calling out on his radio, contact front. So we'll do yes, this. sir, sir, yes, sir. We'll do this we will contact you in the front. Kevin Green is going to fire his M203. We're going to say he needs a six with all the modifiers. Minus three, we're saying, or two for this, or three, I think. I three. Think. And then minus one for the range. He's trying to land it right there. So he needs a six to stick the landing. Oh, so close. Did not stick the landing, so it scatters. So close. Here's just, here's just, oh, you got one. Got one. All right. Let's see where it goes. So it is going to go that it's way easy. a hell of a long ways. So it's over there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to probably explode. It's probably going to land right about no, here. No, if it's six inches on that, it's going to go, it's going to land on the shipping container. All right. Well, I hit something at Either least. Either way. Kevin Green. <laughs> it I blew off. a hole in the wall. <laughs> Not a good shot. We'll say it hit a branch or something on the way out and deflected it. Uh, right, so it that's, explodes. That's Kevin Green. Right, Beersford unloading the saw onto the squad leader, and it's uh, Andre's three against Robert's two. Ooh. Yeah, that. Uh, so roll the six. Looks like it'll be something. Okay. Uh, that's a hit. That's a hit. The five, the five is, is a hit, hit also. Okay, so he's dead. He's taking two hits. Well, wait, wouldn't there, how are the modifiers playing in? I'm plus one on you, so you have to roll... Um, two higher. One higher than I do, or no. No, because yeah. he has to hit first, doesn't he? Yeah, that's, yeah, what, we're that's what we're doing. Okay. you got to roll one higher than my roll. He's a three, you're a two. That so was an okay. auto hit. You needed a six to save that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So gotcha. he's hit twice. Squad leader down. Okay. And the... Alarm is now raised. Everyone knows yeah. you guys are here. So Andre's got uh, uh, Cox left over there with his carbine. Okay, so who do we got left up here? A sniper, and then a machine gunner, and your uh, spotlight radio operator. Uh, let us uh, take out the machine gunner. All right, figure out the uh, dice. Andre's going to double tap with Cox. Three on two. Nice. Get five. Roll one at a time. Five. five. First. And the four. Hit. Both hits. Machine gunner down. Okay. Do uh, you got any other shooting? So you got Padilla and Klain. Uh, uh, Klain can't shoot his heavy weapon, his uh, heavy sniper rifle when he moves, so Padilla could fire. So I'll uh, double tap the rear dude. Okay. So that's going to be uh, sevens. You're at seven. <laughs> seven against two. So, uh, I can't. You can't lose. lose. Yep. So he's down. Uh, yeah. Done. So actually, Andre, uh, three, actually, three, Robert could, could miss, uh, could make these miss. Andre actually, has to roll no. two ones and you had to roll two sixteen. Could be, uh, 36 to the fourth. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> just calculated some quick odds here. <laughs> it's not looking good. Never tell me the can't odds. Can't do it. So he's down. Right, he takes two hits. He's toast. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, no, I've got uh, one more shot over here. Oh. I can take out this other dude. Okay. Should be the same thing. So Bruder, yeah, same thing. Mm -hmm. Ooh, close. He just can't barely <laughs> takes him out. <laughs> he hit him in both legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both femoral both arteries. arteries. <laughs> all right, so that's almost all of the Arbot grunts dead. But everyone is alert now. Almost all. He's still got four. <laughs> he barely got, took out half of no, them. He's only got... Oh yeah, it's just got two guys over yeah. there, doesn't he? No, okay. I, I took out half. All right, so that's uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah, the Arbot guys can't do anything there until next turn, so we'll move on to the next Initiative, turn. here we go. Could be important.
All right, but the or, uh, task force Cox again as the initiative. So yep. now we do a command phase. There might be some commands. So the only command that happened was Robert made a command for a secret reason, which since Andre's standing here, but if you were it's watching the intro, secret. you know what mm -hmm. it means. Other than that, Andre had no commands, so that's the only command that went, and it did uh, succeed. So now it is the movement phase. Uh, first thing, we'll just go over this real quick. Uh, while Bill moved over, he looked through this window, well, and he did see so inside a, a two four, guys. So I've only got a four plus. So we're going to say he needs a four plus to move. Well, what if I, so if I moved over to the door and threw it in through the door? Nope, sorry. I already, here you are. I'm not changing it now to make uh, it easier for you. That was your choice. <laughs> there we go. Well, so he, that, that was before you told me it was a tiny window. Well, you don't have, window. You don't have to throw it. There's bars and glass. of glass, so it's... And you moved. All right. So if you don't, it's going to fall right here and it's going to make stun you. He's trying to throw a stun grenade. So yep. basically, on a four plus, you stun them. On a three or less, you stun yourself. Um, I'm deciding that was a really stupid idea, and uh, I'll put the pin back in. All right. <laughs> okay. Mulligan. <laughs> so while Bill decides against trying to squeak a uh, stun grenade in there. And we'll uh, keep on with the movement and tactical As in full light. Yeah, yep. At the end of the movement phase. So Andre, only people he moved. Uh, we saw uh, we saw Wild Bill. Meanwhile, Not so wild anymore. The Bruder moved over to the gate. We're saying that you can't see through the gate until someone moves through it. It is open. Just got to push it open. Sniper team moved up. Oh, so Padilla and uh, Klain moved up a little bit tactically. Everyone's moved tactically for Andre. Yep. Meanwhile, the chemical troopers are on the move. These guys came out of the back door, which is right there, into the courtyard. Two guys are looking out of the stables this way. One guy's covering the door, sort of like that. Uh, meanwhile, the two guys that were left on the roof, the sniper, so the guy, the radio guy aimed the spotlight over there, and they're now in the pool of light. He jumped down, and then the sniper went down into the church as well. So you guys on patrol got into the van, which I'm curious to see what that does. So as far as, uh, from what I can see right now, it doesn't look like there's going to be any combat because no one has line of sight to anything. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, so that, that's it then. So next next turn. Initiative, here we go. Now it's starting to get important. Oh, tie. Tie again. <laughs> one day Robert will get it. One day. Oh, tie again! Tie again. Uh, you Andres. kept making it harder and harder mm -hmm. to tie there, yeah, Robert. Right. Task Force Cox will go first. Hey, no it's command like phase. Keys and a button. <laughs> so command phase. The only thing that happened was Robert put a bunch of all his guys on Overwatch covering the uh, courtyard here. Andre has no commands. He did remind me. He just told me that he. I was to shoot planning out to shoot the spotlight out was the only thing I could see. And he forgot. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't a huge big deal because I was going to move out of the spotlight this <laughs> turn anyway. But That's a damn shame. And that's it, so movement phase. I'll just summarize what happened so far. So while Bill has gone into the uh, bottom floor of this building, tactically... Um, not the, oh, yeah, because... Uh... Uh, Bruder has moved just over this way a little bit, tactically, to get away from the gate. All of these guys moved up. They stayed still. They went on Overwatch. We generally just always go on Overwatch because there's no downside to ever doing it. Uh, so, Robert started to move. The guys in the van drove around. He's going to flip the headlights on and blind everyone down here with night vision. Because I did mention I was going to take that shot he did. as the van came by. But as the van is about to make its left-hand turn, Sergeant Klain is going to take a shot at the driver and try to put the van out of commission. So you're a six, you're a seven with the scope. We'll say minus two for shooting through the window. Okay. So it's going to be a five against Do I get anything a three. Do oh, you get? Uh, you, you use your agility. If you're getting shot at as in a vehicle, okay. you use the agility instead of gotcha. your defense. So you get one shot. One shot. And minus one, actually, because you're shooting on Overwatch. Yeah. Okay. So you're a six. You're back down to a six, right? So I need what? to... I thought he was at five. Doesn't he go down no, to four? A, no, he's a six plus one for the scope. Seven. Plus one more because he's stationary. Eight. Minus two for the van. Five, eight, six, and then where is the Overwatch? Another minus one. Yes. Five. 
five. Okay, five against three. Yep. Here okay. we go. <laughs> oh, a two. Seven. A tie. A tie. So you missed a shot. You missed the shot. Oh. Sergeant Klein missed the van driver, which means the van completes its move, flips on his headlights, blinds everyone down this road. Does that include? Uh... Not him. Okay. He's not blinded now. And uh, we continue on. Do you have any other movement? Oh, um, the, the guys had moved down. They moved down yeah. to the window here. There is a platform, so they can look out. And he's going to the top of the stairs. All right. So can we see each other? No. Not yet. Okay. Um, other than that, I believe that is the movement phase. So combat phase, Andre. So we'll start over here. Bruder's gonna throw a grenade sight unseen, so I think it's minus three, I believe, to yep. this throw. So we went from a six down to a three, needs an eight to land it. Where do you want it, Andre? Hmm. Right between the two guys, of course. So that'll probably be in the second range band. Well. So again, uh, because of the range interval of the grenades, it needs a six to land it. So where are we gonna put it? Right here? Right yeah. between them. It's a six. Oh, oh, it drifts to... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a six, isn't it? If it points right to Travis? <laughs> yeah, that's a six. Sure. It, no. Okay, so it's a miss. It's going that way. We yeah. already rolled it. Why not? Well, I'll just Because <laughs> I was trying to roll the... Uh... <laughs> roll them both again. Three, three inches, inches that so way. So it's probably going to land and not do anything. Yeah, was throwing a grenade up the stairs. So sadly, it actually landed exactly in the middle here where it hit nobody. Meanwhile, while Bill's going to throw a grenade up the stairs, sight unseen... He heard some shuffling, and it's going to be another minus three, but no range interval. No. So oh. scatters. Oh. This could be bad for you. We'll have to determine to see how it scatters. It's going and, back at uh, him. Man. <laughs> Two inches. Figure. So we're going to say it landed on the stairs between both. They're both going to be caught in the blast, not within one inch. So uh, go ahead and roll for Andre's guy. Need a five plus. No, he's not killed. Well, Bill survives. No. They both survive. Okay. So, uh, let's see what happens to them. All right, so roll a uh, d6 for uh, Wild Bill there, Robert. Casualty table. See what Three. happens to him. Serious wound. He's injured and begins to bleed out. Will be dead in five turns. But I also believe he's stunned and everything else, right? Probably. So roll, uh, see what happens to this guy, Andre. Same thing. Same thing. So they're both bleeding and stunned for one turn, two turns. Okay. And suffer minus two their move agility for the remainder of the game. All right, so they're both going to bleed out in Which means my guy five is turns. He's stunned, he can't do anything, right? Right. Okay. All right, so that, that was Wild Bill. We saw Brooders uh, scatter sadly, and then Andre still has stuff to do here. So I'm um, going to double tap the. Uh, Assault rifle. Okay, the assault probably, rifle in the rose window with Cox. Probably gonna be a minus three. Uh, oh, it's a rose colored window. <laughs> well, technically, it's a <laughs> but who can shoot here? Because remember, these guys are blinded. Uh, only Cox. I'll say. I'll, I will say they could shoot out the headlights if you want. Okay. It's only. I mean, that makes sense. Just start blasting away at the source of the light. You might get. We'll we'll figure that out. But first, Cox is going to fire up into the church window. There's two guys in there. He's trying to hit the assault rifle. He's double tapping. We'll say it's a minus two since it's a big window. And minus three for the double. Minus three for the double tap. He's within 18. So yep. it's minus three. So threes. I can't beat. So that's an eight. You could beat that with a six. Okay. No. Nope. No. no. So he's dead. Assault rifle is killed. So the assault rifle is killed. There's still a sniper in here, but he can't shoot because he moved this turn. Meanwhile, these two guys are just going to blast away. We're going to say he's needing sixes to hit the headlights. Oh, both of them. Knocked both them headlights. both out. Okay. So the headlights are dead. Everyone's back to full vision. Oh, so that means uh, I can see now? He well, here he shot. <laughs> Padilla could shoot. Padilla could shoot. Uh, well, he's still going to be he... stunned. Yeah, we'll see. He'd have to get his vision back. Yeah. He'd have to locate somebody, and he's got two dudes in yeah. his line of fire. He's not going to take the chance. All right, so I think that's it for Andre. Yep. Grenade, grenade. He unless, fired at the van. Unless I shot at the sniper up there. Even then, I think he'd still be. Mm, I don't know enough about night vision. Yeah, we'll say. We'll You'll probably uh, screen in because you, you just got 
We'll say you can't shoot this turn just because of the effects of the headlights. Remember, these turns are happening in like seconds. Yeah. No, I'm I'm totally. Uh, okay it's going to take a that. couple of seconds for your goggles to get back to normal. So that's it for Andre shooting. So do you have any shooting? Oh yeah, those two guys are going to light the guys up in the road. Well, they're in the van. They can fire no, to the windshield. They got it. He said they got out of the van. Well, they drove up here, right? Oh, so they yeah. can't get out. Yeah. Okay. Then okay. Now. We'll say the passenger can take okay. a hot shot. Two shots. But it's a moving vehicle and everything, so it's going to be, uh, we'll figure it out. Who's shooting at? Let's figure that out first. Um, One of these guys. Beersford or Green? Who are standing up? So that's an LMG at Beersford. We'll say the guy from the passenger window can stick his head out of the moving vehicle at minus. Okay. Well, he's going to be at a three. <laughs> Andre's a three, but he's moved tactically, which puts him at a four. So Put to, yeah. Andre's okay. actually got a little bit of an advantage. Ooh. I might need it. Oh, it's a hit. Yep. Uh, he's hit Beersford, so uh, check and see if you do any killing. No. no. See what happens to him. Two. Two. Uh, two. Media Moon. The water model is stunned for two turns and suffers minus two. They're moving agility for the remainder of the game. Oh, man. So, uh, so stunned for two? Stunned for two turns, which so means all your stats are one. Is that a... Do you have that as the stun marker or the bleed out marker? This is the bleed out marker. Okay, you got. Okay, do we need a stun marker over uh, there? We'll try to remember. <laughs> put, put, put a die behind him. I like that. Yeah. Give a little, put, put a little red die on him. All right, so that's one shooting. What else? He's going to roll a frag grenade down the stairs. This guy? Yeah. Well, somebody threw a grenade up at him, so. Okay. He's his. Guy, but remember, I, you're at a warn one. Him? <laughs> you're at a one. So there's a very good chance you scatter into the same room as you. You're blind, you're stunned and wounded. Okay, he'll wait. He'll do nothing. <laughs> it, uh, there's yeah. a good chance you might fumble it and drop it at your feet. Okay. All right, so that's that. And then these guys have nothing. No, they have no targets. Uh, you do have frag, but it's a guy in here, so he can't yeah, really. No. So that's it. Yeah. Next turn. Initiative. We advance the counter. Yep. To three. Bum, bum, Initiative bum. time. Ooh, oh, we got it. Arbok gets the initiative finally. So command phase, Andre did do his special uh, ability that I can't really say out loud. But he called, he made a he made a very important phone call, let's just say that. And Excuse the, me, uh, may I speak to the Secretary of State? <laughs> and the call went through. Yeah, can we get a couple double cheeseburgers, <laughs> extra fries, no onions? <laughs> Meanwhile, okay, so in the movement phase, oh, uh, the sniper in the tower... The bell tower went on Overwatch. Meanwhile, Robert got the two guys out of the van. They opened the doors. They moved tactically out. So they're both uh, behind cover, tactical, looking down the road with initiative. Uh, oh, we're not done with moving, but uh, I just want to go. <laughs> I just want to go over what we've done so far. And meanwhile, the guy that was uh, he moved there, and he's going to move into contact with Wild Bill, who is stunned and bleeding. He's going to try to capture him in the combat phase. And now Andre needs to finish moving. So, well, I gotta do my uh, uh, Overwatch. He's on Overwatch. Yeah. Everybody's going on Overwatch. Right then. Um, and now I'm. Well, I guess te technically, then you would have been able to shoot at those guys going yeah. out of the van if you wanted that minus one, one shot. Because so technically. Would have been more minus than that, though. Well, cover minus, and... minus one plus the minus yeah. three for being in the cover, yeah. So Andre has to decide if he wants to do the overwatch or just start moving. Andre, the first move Andre is going to make, he's going to have Cox move tactically, but the sniper in here was on overwatch. So here we go. So you were a three, we said? Four. 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 So he's got and eight. I'm a four. Yep. So it's just a straight up. So you win. Boom, it's a miss. Phew. Not enough uh, suppression to do anything because he's like, what, a four or five? Yeah. Okay. And So Cox has moved up tactically. Sniper just missed him. And we'll finish the uh, Task Force Cox movement phase. Uh, so as part of his movement phase, Cox is going to throw one of his one flashbang right on the windshield here. Uh, three up, you nail it. Yeah, I'm, he's I'm double. He guys. was double thinking. Should I have thrown the frag? Um, <laughs> That'd be next phase. Yeah. Oh, that's why he was throwing the flashbang. That's right. Yeah. I he, I knew he was smarter than I thought. This is Cox, man. He's a genius. Yeah, yeah. I got um, it. Okay, so these guys are now stunned. So their, all their stats are going to drop down to okay. one. And finish your movement, Andre. The only other movement Andre did was he moved Bruder back this way. Uh, everyone else is staying put. 
So it's now combat phase. So let's resolve the uh, Wild Bill chemical trooper combat. Okay. So Wild Bill's at a one. So we're going to eject him full of morphine. <laughs> this chemical trooper has subdued Wild Bill. And he bind him lose. up with some bandages. It was five to one. He did stop Wild Bill's bleeding. And he's uh, tied Wild Bill's hands and feet together. And he is now a prisoner of Arbok. Next combat, uh, you got these guys there to one though because they're stunned. They're gonna they might as well take a shot. Double tap um, Beresford because he's also stunned. Okay, uh, so it's gonna be yeah. So ones, both of them. Yep. So one. you're gonna be at uh, minus one. And I get one for Red Daughter scope, or does that not apply? Uh, you're at one with everything so plus I'm zeros, the and he's one. So it's ones against ones. So the first guy, we're just gonna do them all. Do them all. Doesn't matter. They're all the same. So only the six. Can he? You can only lose to the six. Um, he could lose if he rolls the one. He could lose to the two, because oh. we're the same. Okay, roll a one. So he lost to the six. Does he lose to the two? No. Oh. So that's actually his second wound. So he should be dead. But we're gonna go ahead and roll on the charts. So roll on the chart. See what happens to him. Two. So another. Flesh wound. So we'll just say he's pretty much incapacitated, but alive. Okay, any other combat? So you subdued Wild Bill, you've knocked out Beersford, uh, you sniped, and that's it, yeah. right? Or, yeah, he yeah. Did. So it's Andre's. So uh, I'm Andre's up. Yep. Combat. Wild Bill's not gonna. He's gonna pull out his. He had his 45. <laughs> His Colt revolver. He pulled out his Colt revolver and starts <laughs> wondering why the which, room is going. Which way to point <laughs> it? The, the room is all spinny and yellow. Okay. Right, so we got Kevin Green and so Padilla left. Green will uh, take his uh, shot. Uh, Grenade. He'll uh, he'll One. shoot at this dude. So you're shooting it with the carbine? Yeah. All right. So you're gonna be a six, a seven, minus three. Four. Fours against threes because he went tactical. Yeah. Woohoo! Well, that's five if you want to do Can one. Can you roll a one? Ooh, it's, tied. it's actually six against three. Six against. What is it? Yeah. So he's got body armor on. Woohoo! The five plus. No. Nope, see what happens to him. Uh, he's just <laughs> the stunned. St the standard. He's stunned. Stunned for two turns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Cox is going to double tap the sniper in the tower. Two shots at four. Oh! oh man. The six. Nope. No. You're a three. Yeah. He's a four. four. No, no, he's dead. dead. Sniper. Arbok grunt sniper killed. Sergeant Klein and his heavy sniper rifle is going to try to take out that last guy there by the dan by the van. Mm, gave you a shot, but I got it. Got so it. You still got him. So, so it's like a two plus, I think, for this. Yeah. It's a heavy sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> he winged him. Five. Well, he's got to roll that, I think. Oh, okay. I yeah. Five. Five. He was so he's incapacitated. Okay. He's done. Unless someone happens to get over there with the trauma kit. All right, so that's pretty much. So I still got. Still got Padilla. Mm-hmm. I still got a guy there. Light him up. Yeah. It's two okay. fours or a... two fours or one five. The four. They tied. Because I'm a three and he's a four. Yep. yep. And the two. Boom. I beat it. Uh, you do take two suppression. I... Don't, uh, they're trained soldiers. He does. He took. He's, he's getting a, lonely over on mm -hmm. this side. He took two suppression with that shot, so he's only a two. So you got to roll a. So he's going to be suppressed. Well, he already rolled the suppression. Yeah. No, it's a morale check for. Or he's the last man of the unit. I don't think that matters. He's suppressed. Okay. So he's no, incapacitated, he already, bleeding out. Travis, he already rolled yeah, the rolled suppression. Yeah, rolled a one and got a one. Oh, well, one, I missed You just weren't paying attention. Okay, I missed the roll. So he did pass, so he's not suppressed. Yep. He's just uh, Any other combat, Andre? I think you're do all not combated out. I think we're uh, pretty well combated out. All right, so turn four. Initiative. Initiative for turn four. Oh, he's God. got it. Yeah, he, he still got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! All right, Andre has initiative. Command phase. Oh, we forgot to actually roll. Andre did uh, pass the order for his thing. But he never rolled to see how long it was going to take. So roll a D2, uh, Andre. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take your fingers out of here. Okay. You told me to plug my ears. D2 turns. Oh, one turn. So that's it. So it's coming in this turn, huh? Wow. Okay, so I think that happens at the com beginning of the combat phase. Okay. All right, so uh, you want initiative, so com uh, command phase. So no commands. 
Or, uh, Andre went over to watch it, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so did Robert, why not? <laughs> and then, uh, so now it is movement phase, and Andre gets to go first. Movement phase. Andre moved Bruder back towards the board edge. Uh, meanwhile, Kevin Green dragged Beersford, uh, unconscious body behind the barrier. Padilla and Klain stayed put, and Cox has moved tactically up behind that rock. Meanwhile, Robert brought in his uh, reserves, which is a group of six professional red hats and a technical with a 50 cal. Chapeau Rouge. Ah. Uh, and these guys are just all staying in here. Meet the guy down here moved up, and he's going to start patching up his buddy. And that's it. So we got six guys in here with the 50. Um, you get to start the party, Andre. Yes, you do. So it is now combat. Hey, Hawks is going to take one shot at the gunner. So in the end, they're equal at four. Woo! You six. can roll a one. I did not. Or not. So he misses the gunner. Okay, so You're, the the gun bounces off the gun shield. The bullet bounces off the gun shield, and that's one suppression. We'll have to maybe this might come in. Eh, it might. It might. Uh, so you still have Bruder. Mm -hmm. He could fire at the gunner. Yep. He is behind a gun shield this direction, though. So you're going to do a shot there? Yeah. All right, so it's the same thing. Uh, actually, it'll, he'll be a little bit better because he's not shooting through all this all stuff. Crap. It's just... Bruder is going to double tap the guy. So uh, it's just a straight shot. So sevens or sixes if you double tap. Yep. And yeah, I hear a four. So you beat the five. No, to beat the four. No, but I get two four plus saves. Yep, because of the gunner. First save. No. Second save. Yes. yes. So Andre, see what happens to the gunner. And you don't make lethality. <laughs> he does not kill the, the gunner. The number. Yeah. <laughs> the number. It's a three happens. again. Now you have to roll the effect. That, that was the lethality roll. You forgot about that. Okay. So now see what happens to him. Yes. One. Yeah, that's nothing. That's just like okay. stunned for one turn. So he'll be uh, stunned for one turn is important here. Yeah, because yeah, he'll drop him to one. You're at a four because you moved tactically. So I'm going to light him up with the... Uh... Well, hold on. Are you done, Andre? Uh, no. I guess you don't... Do you have any other shooting to do? Yeah, I got uh, Padilla taken out. Uh... Oh, there's still a guy over there. That uh, dude. Well, you got Klain, too. Yeah. But you want Padilla to have the honor? Well, I got uh, this guy, too. But All right, yeah. so let's start with we'll Padilla. We'll do it. Uh, Padilla's going to take his All right, so it's going to be minus three for the door. So fours. So a five against your three. Yeah. Saved it. All righty. So miss. So that's one. One more, and he takes uh, another test. So we'll uh, take a shot with uh, Clean. Okay. Ooh. Dead. I can't beat that. Okay. Uh, well, maybe. Anything but Andre. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's dead. Three oh eight to the melon. Yeah. So everyone in the van is dead, and now I believe it is... So we have Kevin Green left, but I don't think he has anything to do. He's got Duncan in uh, sight. Okay, so uh, your uh, combat phase. Okay, right? now we're going to light him up. So he's turning on the headlights. And he the can only do guy. that in the, uh, in the action phase. In the action phase. That's true, he probably could. Maybe he I just auto. assume you drove in with the headlights <laughs> on. Okay, so the 50 cal is going to get, what, three shots? And they're all going on him. You're a one against his four. Uh, actually, you're a zero because you're firing automatic, right? And so I can lose that five. Yeah, if you roll a one. You nope. did not. So he misses and he takes Ooh. three more, so... He doesn't care. He's a four, isn't he? Yeah. Or five. I think he's a four or five, yeah. Uh, command for a elite operator. And then one of the guys will lean out the window and fire at him. All right, so rapid fire. Yep. Uh, I don't think it'll matter. I don't think you're gonna make that. Yeah, you're gonna. So be I gotta one. make my save now. No, you're. He, no, he I mean for. Uh, yeah, for the suppression because that's five hits. Okay. Yep. So anything but. Yep. So he passes the suppression check. Thank God. And I think that's it, right? You have uh, uh, actually didn't something happen at the beginning of that? Oh, combat? the combat. Yes, I forgot. So Robert. Andre has a Hellfire uh, Predator drone flying around okay. the area with and a Hellfire I, missile attached to it. I, I brought it in right there two <laughs> turns ago. Yeah, exactly that spot. <laughs> I've got the judge to That's thanks, right. Travis. Yeah, it's, it, it was uncanny. Okay. I mean, <laughs> un, un, unbelievable, just 
the timing sites. was just <laughs> no. He he dropped it on the roof of this building. Okay. So he's deduced that this is probably the building with the uh, weapon in it. Okay. So it's going to be a direct hit from over there from uh, Padilla. He has ice line of sight to the roof, so the Hellfire is going to come in. Okay. And we'll see what happens. Overpowered. All right. So the uh, here it comes, Hellfire. So it's going to crash into this building. Okay. And it's a three plus lethality, Andre. So roll for this guy here. He's dead. This guy. He's dead. They're all dead. All killed by the Hellfire. So sadly, we lost Sander Tyson, our first uh, patron casualty of the campaign. He was the commander of the chemical troops. Sorry, Sander, but uh, you've been killed in action in the service of Arbok. I'm sure Pierre Pierre will send a, a nice gift basket to your family. He's good that way. But there's also something else in here, is there not? Yes, there is. What would that be? A chemical device. A chemical device is in this building. So, Andre, on a 4+, oh, plus, four you have destroyed... So, the big question, did I already burn all my 4-ups? <laughs> or am I going to be 4 for 4? Four for four. Oh, oh, destroyed. With a six. So the device has been destroyed along with everyone else. Sure. But that actually happened at the beginning of the combat phase. So that's gone. Uh, I think there's, there's enough. There might be a dust cloud there. Cloud. And I, yep. honestly, I don't have line of sight. There's not enough wall blown out. Oh, yeah. yeah you're not. It was just humorous to say. Okay, uh, so well, yeah, that's. From over here, we're, we're kicking butt. But anyway. All right, so uh, next. That's it for combat. It. You're done. Yeah, You're done. done. So the Hellfires come in. It's and obliterated the uh, stables. He's got the initiative. So. And it's a shocking weapon, so Andre automatically wins the initiative this turn. So command phase, there's not really any commands. Everyone, will, He's going to go on Overwatch. This guy is stunned, I believe, so, mm -hmm. but he can still go on Overwatch and possibly take a shot at Bruder when he tries to exfil off the table. Other than that, Andre's talking about possibly rescuing Wild Bill, but like he said, he doesn't know where Wild Bill is. Or there's just no communication. What happened to him? We just know he's All you heard was, out of communication. He heard a grenade go off and he stopped talking. Yeah, so we don't know where he is. We know there's a heavy vehicle with a heavy weapon coming in, possibly more reinforcements. So Andre's trying to decide if he should try to find Wild Bill and search some buildings or just withdraw knowing that we he's. We actually uh, really like that idea, but. Um, we're death getting is scaring you, isn't it? well. No, it's actually uh, Padilla is calling for withdrawal because he can't get caught in here. So while we might be able to fight off this truck, if another truck is coming in, which um, there might be, you know, Padilla is like, you know, uh, we, we did, did what we need to do. We need to get the hell out of here before right. we suffer some real losses. All right. So movement phase then. So to recap, Andre's movement phase, Bruder. Uh, tossed a smoke, block line sight so we can fire his overwatch, and then he's gone off the board, heading back to the uh, rally point. Meanwhile, Kevin Green has dragged Bruder out uh, towards the woods. Padilla's moved up into the woods here, pr presumably to come help Kevin Green drag. Sergeant Klain has moved in with his heavy sniper rifle covering this area, and Cox over here is just going, he's on overwatch, and should this truck move, he'll get a take a pop shot at him, so it's Robert's movement phase. Didn't move the truck. Uh, Cox will take his one shot. Cox is a one shot pony. Uh, so it's, uh, you're a six, a seven. On a minus one for overwatch. the overwatch. And minus two for all the stuff. So you're minus three, so you're a four against your four. Got him. You Got him. him. Roll lethality. He's dead. Yeah, he's gunner dead. down. 50 cal gunner, gunner taken down. Hopefully that wasn't uh, shri uh, Shiving, was it? No, it wasn't. You didn't have your leader out there? Okay. No. So Shiving is still in the uh, in there with he's the He's going to run hats. into the building. This guy? Yep. Okay. Let me, uh, everybody's right. cutting their losses. So uh, he's moved everyone down. The guy patched the guy up from upstairs. This guy with the flamethrower ran. So they're kind of assembling in here. Um, all right, so Robert's going to decide to cut his losses. He's going to take Wild Bill and the rest of these guys, load him up in the truck, and they're going to head back to the secret lab. Sans the device, <laughs> which has been destroyed by a Hellfire missile from a drone. Yeah, so that's it. So we'll come back and we'll wrap. Uh, I was going to say they both mutually agreed that they're just going to pull back.
So we'll come back and wrap it up. So in the end, uh, points wise, so Andre, Task Force Cox, they did destroy the device. So he gets plus five points for that because he destroyed the device with the Hellfire. Me, he is going to lose two points for losing, for having a Wild Bill get captured. So Andre's going to be in that of three points. Meanwhile, uh, Robert, uh, minus three for the device being destroyed. But we're going to give, this wasn't on the list because I never really considered it a possibility. But it did happen. He captured an operator. So we're going to give him five points for that. So he's going to be at a, a plus two. So Andre's at a three, Robert's at a two for campaign point wise. And technically, Andre did win this one. He <laughs> he completed his objective. And I'm one point up. <laughs> he's one point up. And he uh, did wipe out all the Arbok grunts. He didn't kill any of the any of the uh, chemical troopers. He did killed you? three of them with the Hellfire missile. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the Hellfire missile. <laughs> there was Never mind. Hellfire. Why does he a hole here? <laughs> I don't see any bodies. That's right. <laughs> Uh, and poor Sander Tyson, the chemical troop leader, was killed in the uh, attack. So he has the honor of being the first patron killed in the campaign. So until the next campaign starts, we won't see Sander again, sadly. But uh, so moving on to the next game, I'll tell you right now, both of you guys, this was not the real device. <laughs> this was a clone, a dummy. That was meant to draw. That's okay. It wasn't a real hellfire. <laughs> it was a real hellfire. Is it not? We can see that now. But Arbok put out some uh, fake intel. They've misled uh, Shadow Spear into thinking this is where the device is, and they're going to get back to it. headquarters and realize that was not the device, guys. We got new intel that says the real device is somewhere else. So, uh, a valiant <laughs> effort, but in vain in the end, sadly for Task so Force. So it was a total loss for me. Yes, and he would have been even more mad if you went and went in and started search. Well, searching would have got you more points, but then you would have had to deal with all the red hats and all. The, he had a flamethrower chemical trooper. Ooh, it would have been tough. Flamethrower chemical. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it would have been tough to get in here and do any searching with all that stuff. But you both mutually agreed to just withdraw, and so that's it. So the next time we uh, play this game, I'm going to write up some. Uses for these points. I didn't expect it to be so low scoring. But <laughs> I was thinking stuff would be like, you know, two or three. No. One, you guys got two points, one's got three. So I need to figure out the point cost of various upgrades for the uh, missions. Well, there's just not going to be a lot of upgrading on the next one. No, maybe one Where thing each, which is fine. You don't want to have someone just totally buffed well, up. Just or can we everything. bank our points? Or? Yeah, you can. That's one thing you can do. Mm -hmm. If you don't use them, you can save up for something more expensive later. So, uh, but. I think off-table assets, maybe like a, a drone or some kind of surveillance. I could see jammer. taking another Hellfire. Jamming. <laughs> They're I, very good. I, I want a jammer. Jammer, okay. Yeah. Maybe jam and. We'll have to have you guys give me some of these ideas. Raspberry. So, anyway, that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and call it. So uh, Task Force Cox, everyone survived. Beersford was uh, knocked out, but he lived. And we. Uh, and Wild Bill Sander. is. Uh, Wild Bill is in Arbok custody now. Poor Wild bastard. Bill now has a heroin problem. He's going to be in trouble. But I'm sure we'll not a try. problem. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out that he lived. I'm sure Arbok will let us know. So anyway, so that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, the first mission of the Doomsday Device campaign. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, nice new setting. So it's kind of freshens up the game. So with that, we'll go ahead and call it. Check out our Patreon page. Subscribe to the channel. Check out our Facebook group. And uh, as usual, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.